All right, it is now half past the hour. Uh, so welcome to the Viewfind Roadmapping session at WolfCon 2023, the final Viewfind-oriented session of this conference and a Viewfind Summit tradition for many years. Uh, uh, as I alluded to uh, in the previous session, I have absolutely no plan for this, so this is going to be fun. But I really want it to be a conversation between all of us, um, and I think it it will be. So in past years, one of the things that we've really done on the road mapping session is go through JIRA tickets and sort of prioritize things, decide what release they go in. And we've been doing that on a monthly basis in the community calls. So I don't think that there's a whole lot of value in doing that here. So what I'd really rather do is talk about things at a higher level. Um, First of all, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions anyone has about where we are or where we're going or when we think we'll have feature X, if feature X is something that's really important to you. Ha always happy to have those conversations here or elsewhere. Um, and I'm also happy to spend a little time going deeper on particular bits of work in progress, though again, I feel like the community call has taken on the role of allowing us to do that, like for example, we really need to get coordinated on our theme work. That's going to be the topic of uh, the September community call, which is on Tuesday. Um, so I'm gonna open the floor to questions really soon. Um, but first I thought I've got a captive audience and I just wanna complain a little bit, but complain in a productive way, which is to say that I think the project is going through certain growing pains by which I mean the project is growing and it's causing me personal pain. Um, and so just anecdotally speaking, you know, we went through two major migrations this past year. We went to Folio in January, and within a couple of weeks of that, we migrated our entire digital repository across three major versions of Fedora. And all of that was successful. And I thought, the big projects we've been talking about for years are done. I can sit back and relax. And then the volume of Viewfind community exploded. And I've been doing almost nothing but viewfind all the time, all year. And that's wonderful. I am so happy that we have all these people engaging with the community and contributing and adding exciting features to the project. And it's good, except that I still feel kind of like a bottleneck and I'm hoping that we can do better at spreading that out. And, you know, I give full credit to all of the people who support me all the time. Uh, you know, ERA in particular uh, does a huge amount of code review. We talk all the time. When he went on vacation for a month this past summer, I didn't know what I would do, but many people stepped up and helped. And, uh, you know, there there is potential to spread out the load. But, you know, right now we've got 45 open pull requests. I think many of them are actively in flight requiring reviews from me or work from me or waiting on work from others. Um, and it just keeps growing. And like I say, that's a great thing uh, to have happening. And we are making forward progress. Um, but if anybody wants to get more engaged with doing reviews or any part of the process, I would love to, to share the load a little more. And again, people really are already doing that. We've added several committers just in the past few months. Um, but I also think we might need to get a little more organized about some of this as opposed to just, oh, everything goes to Damien first and then he delegates it as he sees fit. Like it's been very ad hoc and it's worked well ad hoc for more than a decade, but I'm feeling the first signs that it's getting a little too big for me to just make up as I go. So I don't, that's not anything we need to decide right now. I'll call that a, a distant early warning. And maybe we'll be talking about that more at next year's WolfCon. I'm also not saying I want to scale back my role. I'm happy to be very engaged with the community, but it's just getting to the point where there may be more than any one person can hold up at once. So uh, it would be great to have uh, thoughts about that. And we have the project management committee. They all support this kind of thing. They can have these conversations too. Uh, Andre's in the room with me right now. Others are on the call. So anyway, I've gotten that off my chest. Just thought it was worth saying uh, and maybe to direct some conversation. So that being said, how's everybody feeling? What what are what are your major needs? What are your brilliant ideas? 
may I just interject uh, a couple of thoughts here? Absolutely. Hey, this is Eremaila from the National Library of Finland. And uh, regarding uh, uh, code reviews and being a bottleneck, I think, uh, yeah, I agree. It's a huge uh, responsibility, a huge task, and uh, and you've been working really well in that regard, as far as I can see. Uh, even though there is some some queue for for code reviews, uh, but the point I was trying to make is that make make it is that the, in a sense, uh, uh, while you can spread some of the load, there it makes sense to keep some of the reins within a small group of people because this allows you to uh, maintain the the kind of coherence and uh, and consistency that the code base has of course all, it could always be even more consistent but uh, but it's there is a there is certain value in uh, in having a small group of people who know the code base well enough to say that uh, we are used to doing these things this way and there is some value in uh, following the, the the existing convention in some things. So, yeah, there is always room for improvement. But sometimes uh, code reviews being the bottleneck is uh, sort of inevitable to maintain the quality. That's that's how I see the things. Uh, I agree, and I, I think what what I'm really looking for is to start growing in more people who are able to do higher level code reviews and maybe getting more help with sort of first round code reviews because you know i i i view code review as like a game of tennis and i feel like the the pull request comes in and i look at it and i'm like what can i do to bat this back at the person who sent it so that it's not in my court anymore and i can look at the next pull request and so you know it's often obvious things like oh it's failing continuous integration you need to run php cs fixer to make it fit to make it pass so like please do that first then i'll look at this or you know other low level things like this this piece of code could be greatly simplified if you did this little bit of refactoring or or things that are more general and it would be great to have you know maybe some mechanism whereby uh pull requests that have had no reviews at all yet uh could get tagged so that people who want to start to engage with the process could pick them up and look for those obvious things and then maybe escalate them to a higher level for a deeper, more, you know, holistically aware view, because I realize people who've been working with the code a long time know about all the interactions and subtleties that somebody who's new to the code couldn't possibly be expected to know right away. But not every pull request requires that level of expertise to bring to a, a satisfactory conclusion. And perhaps there are models in other communities that we could follow. I mean, I, I think from what, what I, I've learned of, of the folio processes, that's like the the polar high complexity opposite of uh, ad hoc. So, you know, maybe there's somewhere a little closer to the middle that would be beneficial to us. And I also say all that by way of some apology to people who submit pull requests and then get me bouncing them back to you with relatively nitpicky complaints. Uh, it's all part of the process. <laughs> um, There is also some value in that, in the, in the sense that uh, uh, slowly you learn to think uh, think about things that uh, might get caught in the in the code review, and I sometimes uh, I feel like, ah Damien is gonna get this one, so I'll need to fix it beforehand, and if I don't, you will find find it, and I will have to fix it anyway. 
Yes, and I, I try not to to provide useless feedback for sure. Like there's a purpose to everything I, I send, but you know, sometimes I will look for the low hanging fruit before I can re render the mental energy to look at the whole thing. Uh, that also being a suggestion that if you're submitting code, submitting it in the smallest possible pieces is always greatly appreciated. If you're fixing six different bugs, I'd much rather have six different pull requests than one pull request with six intertangled things going on in it. Uh, and we've we've gone through a little bit of that in the past year and split things out, and that's been helpful. Um, particularly challenging with, with accessibility-related work because of the way there can be cross-cutting concerns in templates across multiple pull requests and figuring out the order to merge things and all of that. But, but anyway, um, I don't want to spend the whole time talking about process because I, I suspect that's not incredibly interesting to the whole audience, but uh, I am interested to hear if anyone else has anywhere anything they'd like to talk about. And if not, we certainly could just uh, go down the road of looking at what's currently pending for the next release and talking about it, if that would be of interest. Uh, I have, okay, maybe I've already discussed it. Um, I was wondering if um, we could, uh, we couldn't could try to um, define responsibilities for pull requests based on, let's say, modules that you find. So to say that if there's something for the viewfind search module, then it's not not your Damien's primary tasks, but you delegate it to a. I think it, in in the Linux kernel it's called officer, uh, uh, a known officer that knows uh, this particular subsystem uh, of viewfind. That's a possibility. And I, I guess there are a couple ways we could go. Um, you know, one of my biggest concerns is I am happy to delegate reviews, but I don't want anyone to think like, oh, I'm I'm picking on person X and making them <laughs> review everything and they're busy right now and can't do it. That doesn't benefit anyone. The pull request isn't going to move because the person's too busy. They will feel pressured by receiving things they're not ready to review, et cetera. But if we had a way for people to opt into that process, uh, either by something like a wiki page where people can self-identify as being willing to work on certain types of things, or uh, through something like what I did uh, during Array's vacation, where when I had something that needed review, I just put it in the general channel on the viewfind Slack and said, hey, who wants to review this first? And a couple of things just sat there because nobody wanted to review them, but quite a few things did get reviewed and merged and that worked well in many cases. And maybe it's a hybrid solution where I do the, hey, this is up for grabs. And if nobody grabs it, <laughs> then we figure out who to actually assign it to. And if, if that sounds like an agreeable starting experiment, then consider that notice that you should watch the general channel in Viewfind Slack, or we could create a pull request review channel specifically for this purpose that people could follow. That might actually be the smart thing to do uh, and then go that route. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly happy to at least initially coordinate the task of you know, highlighting things that could use some attention. Uh, I know when I get back from after this conference, I'm going to need to basically start at the bottom of the pile and work my way back up just to refresh my memory of where everything is. And maybe there are some things uh, in that stack that it would make sense to ask for help with. I think that makes sense. But the one thing that uh, I would be careful to avoid is the uh, uh, driving the contributors to a situation where they have to sort of advocate for their contribution or the pull request to get it get, get reviewed or get some visibility for it because some projects suffer from uh, from 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 that and uh, it's not nice if you have to go go like kind of driving around trying to find the people people to review your thing 
uh, particularly when you are not uh, so familiar with the project and you don't know the people. Absolutely. And, you know, my my perspective here is the whole goal of this is to get things done faster, not to prioritize some things over other things, um, because I, I really do try to repeatedly look through top to bottom the, the pull request list. And if I see something that I think is maybe of questionable value or unlikely to go anywhere, I will comment at the person who created the pull request and ask them explicitly, you know, do you still need this? Has anything changed? Uh, and I won't close it until that's gone unanswered for quite a while. So, you know, that's that's part of the process too. Um, also, I think it's important that we don't end up with a culture where people feel pressured to approve pull requests without actually reviewing them properly, because that's also counterproductive. You know, I'm if I ask somebody for a review, I'm never asking for a blanket sign off unless the pull request I'm asking them to review is I corrected a spelling error in a comment somewhere, in which case, yes, I'm asking for a blanket sign off on that. Don't you know. Oh, if you want to come up, oh, or okay. or I can, I can, I can come to you. Whatever. <laughs> I've been in so many sessions where the people on Zoom say we can't hear what they're saying, so mic, right? I think you have mic. Um, yeah, I have a roadmap question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, because I'm newer to developing in Viewfind. Um, have there been recently or anything planned? For competitive reviews with other discovery layers, meaning either the usability or the functionality that we have right now, and sort of looking at the state of some of the other products that, um, I mean, even like here at Wolfcon, other folio libraries that, that don't use Viewfind right now, you know, they're horrible people, all of them, but you know, um, you know what I'm saying, like looking at what their usability is and and, and features, functionality, and, and are, are those represented anywhere in our in our tickets and JIRAs and outputs? So I think the answer is we haven't done anything like a an explicit competitive review uh, that I can recall. The closest that comes to mind is a couple of years ago, we did sort of a generalized discovery survey where we asked, you know, what discovery layer are you using? What are the things you like the most about it? What are your pain points? And then we analyzed that and that informed some things. Um, but it might be interesting to see what's going on. It's It's a little hard to uh, compare product to product in some cases, like, you know, I think in terms of open source, our most obvious competitor is Blacklight, but the Blacklight paradigm is so different from Viewfind in that the Blacklight libraries tend to be really hands-on and building lots of custom stuff. So I think Blacklight libraries are even farther apart from each other than Viewfind libraries are, and they can be pretty far apart. Uh, of course, we don't know what EBSCO is coming up with with uh, their new tool. I, I don't know what that's going to look like. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if anyone has, but there's EDS, obviously. Um, so certainly, if if that's something anyone would like to uh, think about more, I, I'm open to some analysis, and that's something the PMC could talk about as well. And since we're starting to get some ideas, um, I should ask, uh, I think I saw Chris on the call. Chris, are you planning on uh, capturing some of these things or should somebody- uh, I, am, I, am I am planning on capturing some of these things. I just had to step away for a second where my neighbors knocked on my door. Ah. So I, I, missed the, I, I missed the last two minutes of discussion, but I am gonna be taking notes from here on out. All right, well, so just really quickly, uh, Maccabee suggested the idea of a competitive review against other discovery products to see how we compare in terms of features, accessibility, and so forth, in case that helps to motivate parts of the roadmap going forward. And I think that would be a good thing for the PMC to discuss. Competitive makes, the word competitive makes me a little nervous, comparative maybe, because I'm not sure that we want to be, you know, feature to feature complete with uh, rival products out there. I mean, they might be doing something well for a different purpose, which would not look good in Viewfinder. 
Yes, that, that is very fair. I don't like competition uh, generally. I prefer a more thoughtful and collaborative approach. So feel free to scratch competitive and say comparative. I support that. <laughs> I mean, if, if you had a hand on a microphone that you were carrying around, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I've been so talking. We, we, only, we only hear you when you're, you, you, you can be heard well when you are sit, standing there where you are right now otherwise it's kind of difficult to hear you or anyone else i apologize i don't know what i guess it's just using the laptop mic and this mic that's sitting here that i've been talking at all morning is doing absolutely nothing uh <laughs> Well, in that respect, this has been working really well, and I heard the, the first comment, uh, but it was kind of distant. Oh, yeah, well, the, the most recent comment was all the way, as far away from the laptop as you can be and still be in the room. So, but in any case, to summarize for those who didn't hear, it was just the comment that comparative review might be a better word than competitive because Viewfind isn't necessarily competing directly with all the features of other products because, you know, maybe they're serving one market, we're serving a different market and just assuming feature parity wouldn't necessarily be beneficial. And I'm inclined to agree with that, though I also always like to be sure that the architecture of Viewfind is flexible enough that even if we're not going to make the strategic decision to support something right now, I can at least envision a way that we could in the future. I think that's an important uh, strategic uh, goal. So there are really no features that anybody feels so passionate about that they want to complain that we don't have them here. I mean, if that is the oh. case, I think we're doing really well, but uh, you know, our road mapping sessions used to have a lot more people advocating. I, it's because uh, Array built the blender and now we can do that impossible thing. So now what else is there to do? <laughs> well, I, I have well, two. Blender is still missing the advanced search, so that's something I need to need to fix. At least Which some one? sort of advanced search. So so there is some more work coming up at some point when I get when I have time to do it. It won't be so advanced, but uh, it will be more advanced than a simple search. Great. Oh, I've I've uh, two two ideas. Uh for uh, something that we would like to take on if you get the resources. Uh, one is, um, you heard about Solar Probe. Um, I want to be able to do this for all remote services. So it's not just Solar, um, but things like uh, ILS, w whatever we, we do. Um, and uh, the second thing is uh, about caching. Uh, I was I was looking into the well, into it's a long story. I was talking into how uh, Solar implements or no, what you find uses for caching, and I found that it's uh, a, a little bit messy. They are so um, I would like to. Uh, I think the thing that we would like to touch is uh, the whole uh, cache record caching thing. I think there are at least two systems in place. Uh, and the general idea is to utilize the, what's it called, the PSR16 uh, cache interface to, to provide a, a unified interface uh, mm -hmm. to cache things. Um, I already have some experimental stuff in, in our repo, so it's it it worked to some certain degree. Um and at Hamburg uh, we are currently well we, we will look for uh, uh no uh if we get the resources we will uh happily um do this and look into this. Um, because this is one uh, puzzle piece of uh, improving the search and pr pr 
performance is a more aggressive caching or caching of records. Yeah, I think the, the use case that originally motivated the record caching is very different from the use case that you're facing. And so it makes sense to think about if there's a way we can meet both <laughs> more effectively. Um, yeah. And also um, regarding the, uh, the events for other interfaces, at least the ILS I would think would be fairly easy to add event hooks to because everything already goes through uh, the ILS connection class. So maybe we can augment or refactor or redesign that while keeping uh, the rest of the system more or less intact. The, um, I, I was thinking about also, I was thinking about the HTTP, you find HTTP module. Um, I think I remember that we need to somehow work on it because the Laminas framework, uh, I was thinking about the HTTP module. Uh, I know that uh, Basel HTTP, for example, uh, provides a, a way to hook into uh, the HTTP interaction. So this would be a, a even lower level um, than the ILS. I guess I was thinking about the fact that not every ILS driver uses HTTP. So oh, in yeah. some cases, you might need a higher level if you wanted to, to monitor that. But uh, you are also correct that at some point, a holistic review of our HTTP interactions is a good idea uh, because the Laminas HTTP predates all the PSRs about HTTP and doesn't conform to those standards. And I think it would be beneficial to uh, use something like Guzzle that's more modern, uh, but that's a big undertaking. Yet also an undertaking that could be done piecemeal without breaking the system. So, you know, something oh, to start but, thinking about. But that's that's boring. <laughs> right, right. Well, but we're already ripping out all the database <laughs> logic and rewriting it. That's exciting enough for one year, I, I feel. <laughs> All right. We something. have, uh, yep, you got it. Yep. From the chat, uh, I'm planning on working on user management functionality so that the patron can delete the account in the viewfind session or also without password. Uh, EU rule that I saw some months ago mandates that. Uh, also, some things like creating an account or temporarily locking the library card in case it was lost, done over the ILS API. Uh, things like these are, are on uh, Helga's personal list. So, Thank you for those updates. That's all good. Uh, and I know we do have some bits and pieces that are adjacent to this, but not quite this. So hopefully we can extend what's already there uh, where possible. That's a third a third one that we came across. And this is um, uh, two of our discovery systems uh, don't uh, have uh, user accounts. So in theory, we wouldn't need a database. And um, I'm inclined to look into Viewfind and see if we could um, provide a way to make it possible to run Viewfind without the MySQL database at all. Um, I think this should be possible, but yeah. Yeah, and that, that may actually be more possible after the refactoring of the database layer. Yes. Um, Indeed. So I'm waiting. Uh, right, right. And uh, you know that keeps moving forward, but there may be there may be a time where I, I start begging for some all hands on deck to finish it. We'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. But uh, Dharma, our our grad student, is doing a great job moving that project forward uh, and has gained a lot of experience with Viewfind's internals in the process of doing it. Um,
I also really appreciate the fact that we're not getting any requests. We're getting people volunteering to do things. So that's, that's the best. <laughs> As I, uh, I think I mentioned in the state of the project talk, another big thing on my mind is rewriting the uh, the WorldCat API integration for the new version. And I think Andre, who's in the room, is also interested in that one. Is is this important to anyone else? Or well, we are actually working on uh, um, making a module which we are using in our. Um, um, special research panels in happy days. So uh, when we have set up this uh, we, uh, for the work that we're doing, I'm pretty sure we can share that and just adapt it to the different form. So that would be another big problem. That's great. So uh, in case you couldn't hear, Andre said that they're currently building a, a custom module for some of their instances that implements the, the V2 API. So when that's done, they can hopefully contribute that back to be integrated with the core and that will be uh, at least a big part of the battle solved. So thank you. I will not spend too much time on that code until I hear more from you. <laughs> I have one very specific thing that uh, I think would be useful to tackle at some point, and that's the uh email verification or authentication or authorization that's now based on magic links and i'd really like to move towards the uh, codes that the user gets via email or something and has to enter on the page that they're logging into or verifying their email address or something because in in many cases that would make things easier to work on we could provide the links still if someone wants to use them but uh but uh i think most services nowadays use uh like six digit codes that you enter while you are at it and it uh it makes sure that the page stays the same the bro browser stays the same and there is no like you came from one browser where the session is active and you you click the email link and it went to another browser where the session is n not active and doesn't work and everything blows up. Right. That also is a reminder that we've had some conversations about uh, two-factor authentication integrations, which is a topic that's come up in the past as well, but hasn't really gotten traction yet. I think in large part because many of the people who care about dual-factor authentication already have single sign-on and thus don't need two-factor authentication in ViewFind but there might be some use cases where it would be useful, so. There's a little bit of work on this with the password recovery of saving a code in the database and then comparing against it. Um, I haven't looked at it in a long time, but I think it's the basic premise is also good. Um, Damien, would you mind scroll, scrolling down a little bit on the notes so that the, the stuff that I've been typing lower can be seen? Oh, sure. There we go. Also, I see that uh, Thomas in the Zoom has been waiting very patiently to uh, to share some thoughts. Oh, I'm very sorry. Please go ahead. Yes, sorry. Uh, I think I... Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, nice. Uh, of course, uh, I spoke so uh, sooner, but uh, I think you didn't hear me. Um, so I wanted to make a comment on this user management because, well, yesterday I had a talk about this. Uh, with the API and um, well, yes, I I didn't get any emails uh, until now, so I I wasn't sure if this is something um, anyone is thinking about or um, is concerned about. But well, uh, it looks like at least some people um, will think about how can we do this, like the deleting accounts and um, provide this possibility to um, well comply to the German law or EU law. And yes, um, if you are planning, uh, Helga wrote this, uh, you are already uh, also planning on um, doing something like this. So I don't know if this is the right spot where we can 
discuss further um, or to move forward with this because, well, as I said, um, I wanted to also do something like this. So if you have any thoughts about this, well, please let me know. Always better to have one solution that works for two people than two solutions. That <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't sure if uh, our solution is too to um, specified uh, for our system or if it is something that can be generalized for all the uh, installations of Lufthansa. So I would like to hear more about this. So if, if there are any thoughts. Well, as you said, there's, you know, the, the advantage to keeping it external is that it's external, which is more secure, but the disadvantage is your technology stack is very different from what the default technology stack is. So I think that would, it sounds like a, a solution that people could use, but they would probably be less likely to use it because of the overhead in terms of learning curve and infrastructure that they might face if their environment doesn't already resemble uh, what you've done. Um, and if we did want to move that closer to the core, uh, you know, certainly one option would be the idea of building it in its own standalone module so that it could only be enabled under controlled circumstances and the code would not even be registered or accessible under others, uh, similar to what I talked about at, in my lightning talk about our reporting module. Um, but I don't know, I don't know enough about how the API code is structured to know how easily we could modularize that and plug things into it. But I suspect there's a way. Yeah, as I, as you said earlier, uh, with the extra module <laughs> that directly uh, remembered uh, me about this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but but I think the problem with this is simply if only two people are interested in this, I think uh, we will stick with our own solution and. Yeah. So if not, nobody really sees a benefit in in doing this in a, uh, for viewfind or in a, for in general. I think uh, we can <laughs> let this topic also rest. Uh, so, yeah. I don't. Know. I also see uh, Helga says in the chat, uh, audio is not good, but willing to discuss. So maybe it would make sense for the two of you to connect at a more convenient time if. You know, if, if a better connection could be established, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, that's, that sounds great. Um, I'm not sure uh, if you have watched uh, my presentation from yesterday, or if you haven't, uh, you can still go to the to the um, session and find the files in there. You find my email, so you can can write me an email, and we can see what we can do. Yep, and we'll be getting all the recordings up at, as soon as we're able to get through all the editing, which may take a little while, but it's coming. <laughs> Any other uh, exciting projects in anyone's pipelines that you'd like to share? Mario has his hand up, hand up. Ah, I keep not yeah, seeing I, the hands. <laughs> uh, I just have a, have one question. Now I'm not sure whether this is one topic that's that's uh, good for discussing here or or instead discussing it at at the uh, community call. But uh, I think that there is a feature that uh, we started working on in 2019 and it keeps keeps getting postponed on and on and on. And that is an open pull request with this uh, citation style language templates. And uh, I'm just wondering, uh, because it's also not on the list for 10, so uh, it's it's still on the wish list. Um, I just wanted to ask how big the, the, the interest uh, in the community is and um, also, if, if you pl have any plans on maybe uh, setting a, a version goal for implementing this, because there are some kind of um, 
uh, bugs in our current uh, front end where users complained about, and we basically it happened that we have to we had to correct some some style templates. Then, like a month later, after we corrected it, somebody said, "Oh, it's it's incorrect. You have to correct it back or make an addition and some something." And so it would be kind of nice to have the official templates uh, to be using. And we keep postponing this on and on because uh, we think, okay, this this pull request should be finished at some point in some of the future versions. But if not, then we might have to do a bit more uh, related on the current solution. So, so the question would be, uh, yeah, is there any version that this will be? Uh, part of in the future or is it still getting postponed even more i think the the question is how many people want to get involved in it uh this one i think the state we're currently at is that we worked together on it for a while and then there was a bit of a pause and during the pause everything released new major versions and all the code broke so it needs to be updated for compatibility with the new libraries and all of that which is you know, a project of moderate complexity, at least. Plus, even aside from that, we hadn't really settled on the the details of how it should be configurable or how the integration should work. So it's, it's I'd say, a very early proof of concept stage right now with a lot of technical debt, which means it's a big project to get through. Uh, I think it would be a good thing to have. I'm definitely not opposed to doing the work. Um, but at least on my end, there are many, many more immediately obvious, urgent goals to work on that are taking up my time. So I think it would need to have somebody else leading the charge on it to to get more traction. Um, again, not to say I'm not willing to help. I just, I'm going to be working on the doctrine migra migration before I'm going to be working on the citation <laughs> migration. Um, I also kind of suspect that at Villanova, we may be biased toward the existing code because we wrote it for our specific needs. And it's likely that the general purpose will actually be worse for us, but it will probably be better for some other people. So, you know, but that also brings up the idea of whether we have to find a way to balance using ViewFind's local custom citation building under some circumstances and going to the generic version in others, it gets complicated. Okay, but I have I haven't I given fully up. I understand oh. if you have more more important uh, topics to work on yourself. Of course, I also uh, I think I joined in working on on that a while ago. Maybe I can also in intensify that a bit. But right now we're also in the phase of tubing and where we're going to decide what will happen from our side over the next three years or so. So still lots of discussions going there. So I cannot make any any promises yet. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot for 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 uh, the information and the feedback. Sure. And, and certainly, I think if somebody could spend a few hours bringing it up to date and making it work again, that's a great first step to then getting back to the higher level conversations. Uh, all right. And this time, I don't think I'm missing any hands and I don't see any new chat messages. And we have... Uh, Can I just comment quickly on something earlier? Sure. I think uh, some of us talking about uh, an idea in, uh, and whether there is a interest in that. I think uh, if you want to really kind of assess the interest, it should be spread wider than this uh, this meeting at least. So talk about it on on Slack or post on Wolf and Tech or something. So more people can see see the proposal. I think something like that would uh, give you a better idea of whether something is interesting to others. Absolutely. Um, I think we have a lot of people uh, in the room and on the call right now who are actually uh, well-equipped to make things happen if they want to. So it's great to have a conversation with this group, but getting broader context as well is is valuable for sure. Yes. The microphone doesn't work, so just talk loud. I'll leave them up there for a second. If I'm going to do a plug, I want people to hear me. So um, 
uh, I built a couple of integrations in the last few months that I would love to get feedback from other institutions if they care and feature development. So just to mention them briefly with um, EBSCO Publication Finder, pulling that as a data source into ViewFind to list journals you know, that match a search query, as well as in LibGuides, there was an existing integration, uh, SpringShare LibGuides, there was an existing integration for the actual guides to, to have those as a sidebar. But there are two new integrations for the A to Z list, the databases A to Z list in SpringShare, pulling that into ViewFind, as well as the, what LibGuides calls profiles, which I would just call librarians, to be able to do a search and have a little box in the corner of ViewFind that says, based on this query, um, and based on the results that showed up, you should really talk to Jen Colt. She'd be the expert uh, librarian, you know, on this, which I have stole from, from something that Damien built from Villanova. But all those are very much prototypes. Anyone using either LibGuides or Publication Finder, I would love to hear some beta testing and some improvement ideas. At least it seems that uh, our libraries are really interested in everything that LibGuides provides. So. So yeah, everything could be interesting. I can't can't really say what specific aspects uh, would be useful for us, but uh, there seems to be some general interested in interest in those. I think the the underlying API there is pretty limited in what it can do, but it still does something. <laughs> Uh, uh, a few comments in the chat. One was me asking uh, if if the, they could put a link to their plug in the in the document in the near future uh, to their integrations. And also uh, Helga is asking if anyone has a CI or CD set up for GitLab so that she could run. I'm sorry, so that he could run the 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 integration tests locally. I am not sure from my end. There was a push a couple of years ago to try to do CI with GitLab when uh, Travis stopped supporting open source. Uh, so I actually got a GitLab account at that time, but then GitHub Actions started doing the job and I never got around to setting up GitLab. Um, but I would think it shouldn't be terribly hard because we have you know, Fing and Composer hooks that do most of the things. So I don't know anything about how GitLab CI works, but I would think if you can get an environment where you can Composer install and then like Composer, uh, what is it, QA, uh, that might be at least a, a strong start on the process. Also, uh, just in terms of talking about future plans, uh, one of the other things that's on my roadmap is, as I mentioned, we did our digital repository migration earlier this year, which included updating our front end to uh, Viewfind 8. We need to get to Viewfind 9 now that it's been released. Uh, but in any case, that includes a big custom module that integrates the universal viewer and some other customizations to allow viewing of our Fedora content. And our Fedora content is all managed through our ViewDL project, which has been completely open sourced. So I'd love to make an open source version of our ViewFind module so that the entire platform is available if anyone wanted to replicate what we're doing. And it may be that nobody does because what we're doing is somewhat specific to us, but I really like it. So, you know, maybe somebody else would too. You never know. <laughs> is Universal Viewer, a, is that a triple IF viewer? Correct, yes. Uh, Universal Viewer is a triple IF viewer. So uh, the architecture of our platform is pretty, it has a lot of moving pieces, but basically we have Fedora, which uses its camel toolbox to intercept changes that sends messages to a custom app that does solar indexing into ViewFind Solar. And that's the source of truth for everything. And we also have a IIIF image server 
that is tied to universal viewer to display things and it fetches things on demand from fedora and caches them and generates tiles and yeah. uh, it's all pretty neat <laughs> so again that's something i'm happy to share more about if anyone's interested but uh and actually there's going to be a lyricist hosted fedora thing in a couple weeks and i'll be there talking about this more so if you're interested, sign up for the Fedora Days Lyricist event. It's free and you can hear more. And I see Ari uh, posted a link about GitHub to GitLab migration, which might be helpful for the CI question. So thanks for that. The other thing uh, what we are working on right now is uh, we find this for some years now the search visualization, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it's quite outdated. <laughs> and the colleague of mine is actually now working on bringing it up to date and uh, also trying to integrate some more visualizations. So uh, we are not sure when it is ready to be pushed to the community. But um, it's definitely our aim. I think I hope so. Uh, by the end of this year, maybe the uh, end of uh, beginning of uh, next year, we have it ready and set up. So maybe for one point ten, we could uh, uh, yes, uh, we could also update this one. So for the the benefit of the stream, if you didn't catch all that. Uh... Leipzig's doing work on modernizing and expanding ViewFind's visual search and hope to have something ready for contribution by end of year, so maybe in time for ViewFind 10. Uh, and I would add to that, I know that we have an ancient JIRA ticket from the ViewFind 1 days that has patches from some visualization project that was done by, I think, an Israeli library. And there was interest in porting that forward and it just never happened. Mm. Um, so it might be interesting to dig that up and look at it in case there's anything at all useful still in there. And maybe we can close it one way or another once we have something that's roughly equivalent. And if you can't find it immediately, I definitely have the ticket number in my email because the oldest email in my inbox, which I use for tracking work, is a JIRA comment from like 2018 from somebody saying, could you please help me port this forward? And I've just never gotten back to that email to do it because there's always something more pressing. So I apologize for my <laughs> failure, but maybe we can finally make it right. All right, eight minutes to go. I'm just going to keep counting down until people say things. <laughs> would, would you mind making a note of that, Damien? I had to step away for another second, so I missed I missed the what you had the link to. Uh, let's see. We have we have gone to the next page. If you're wondering why where the bottom oh, is. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I think we just had. I'm not optimistic that that's reusable 12 years later or whatever, probably relies on a JavaScript library that no longer exists or something. But again, at least as a, a design or a concept, there might be something still uh, to consider. Uh, not off the top of my head, but well, actually, I have my phone right here. And as I said, it's in my inbox. So if I can scroll far enough back in my inbox, here it is. It is 825. Do you find 825? And then I can just say, you find 825 contains.
All right. And I apologize, there are so many windows here. I'm not doing the best job of keeping track of raised hands and chats and the, the video for the room and the moving document, but we're, we're getting somewhere. This should be easier than 45 pull requests. All right, well, it's five minutes to go and uh, I'm happy to keep talking, but I could also uh, use the uh, the promise of getting to the lunch table first to justify wrapping up a little bit early. Um, so I'm gonna start thanking people slowly. You can interrupt me as I go if there's anything you want to say. But again, thanks to everyone for your input on the conversation, for thinking about work that's coming. Uh, I look forward to, as I led with, uh, maybe improving some of our collaboration to make the community even more responsive and efficient. And uh, it's really been great to be here in person with people again, and still to have so many virtual participants who have played a really active role. This has been, I think, a, a model hybrid conference, uh, and I thank everyone for participating in it. And with that, uh, I will... Social part, though. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I missed the social part, though. Yes, yes. I had we, been there. We, we, need to, we need to remedy that sooner or later, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think the reception would have been very good over Zoom. <laughs> All right, so I will hopefully see some of you uh, next week on the community call and the rest uh, maybe next year, but anytime as well. All right, with that, I am going to leave the Zoom. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.